It's week one of the NFL, and we give you our best three bets for this Sunday and tell you how you could take home $1,000, and it all starts right now. Hey guys, it's Matt from GrandstandBetters.com, and we give you our three best bets for NFL week number one, but real quick, did you know that we are hosting a free NFL betting contest at GrandstandBetters.com? Go sign up today and start putting your week one picks in. You better hurry. The registration is only open till 1 p.m. on Sunday, September 11th. Whoever comes in first place in that betting contest is going to take home $1,000 of cold hard cash. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button for all our free picks and predictions all season long and smash that like button if you are ready to watch a full Sunday of NFL football. I know we are. So without further ado, let's dive in to our best three bets for week number one and this NFL season, starting with, of course, our Cleveland Browns taking on the Carolina Panthers in the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Panthers are one and a half point favorites at the moment, and the over under is set at 42. Now, it has been about 18 years since the Cleveland Browns started the season 1 and 0, and we'll be honest, we went to the last preseason game the Browns had against the Bears, and Jacoby Brissett looked awful, along with some others like Anthony Schwartz. So, this year, it might look like they're not going to get on that win column again. Now, the Cleveland Browns, honestly, last season didn't put up huge offensive numbers so far uh, from Baker Mayfield's last season. So the upside here with Brissett is going to be minimal or maybe it is going to be a downside. We'll have to see uh, now that Watson is suspended for 11 games. The Browns, they were in the bottom half of the league in points per game with 20 and a half and had the sixth worst passing offense in the league, not even eclipsing 200 yards per game last season. So yeah, Brissett will be at the helm, but really it's not that big of a downgrade from what they had last season. The real key that we all know for the Browns is the duo in the backfield, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, and really that entire backfield. If they can replicate the 145 rushing yards per game this season from last, hey, maybe they have a chance at making the playoffs. Now, Carolina's defense is great, but if there is a weak spot in it, it's definitely defending the run. Last season, they were very mediocre, allowing 113 yards per game on the ground, which was in the bottom half of the NFL. Now, with much anticipated inconsistency surrounding the passing game uh, of Jacoby Brissett to his wide receivers, the Browns should come out early and often here, establishing that run to hopefully maybe set up some big play-action fakes down the field late in the game. But the big question is, can they outscore Baker Mayfield uh, with the premonition that he is out for blood against this Cleveland Browns team? There are high hopes in the Carolina camp that this team can rebound from that 5-12 record, but let's be honest, it seems that this team goes how Christian McCaffrey goes. McCaffrey, who seems like he has just been injured for the better part of the last two seasons, is back to what they say is healthy. Baker Mayfield, having watched him the last few years in Cleveland, he is going to be running a style of football with that Carolina football team uh, that, quite honestly, is going to play to his strengths. Look for the Panthers to utilize a strong running game with McCaffrey and Hubbard. Baker to throw a lot of screens to those two out of the backfield and take his chances down the field when they're there. Now listen, offensively, these Panthers still ranked 20th in rushing last year, and that was without CMC. So if he can stay healthy for the whole year, the Panthers honestly, I think, have a real shot at that 7 seed. That's a big if, though, with CMC, if he can stay healthy. The only way that that happens uh, and that they beat the Browns here in Week 1 is if they get Baker Mayfield's best. So, what is our actual best bet of the Browns versus Panthers this Sunday? Well, here in week one, the Browns secondary, which was top five last year in the NFL, will be looking to take advantage of any pass that Baker throws high. And trust me, there's going to be a lot of them. On the other hand, though, Baker has to be pissed off 
with everything that went down in Cleveland, especially since the QB the Browns actually got uh, is going to be sidelined for week number one. And that was who they really chose over Mayfield. Remember, Brissett's just a backup. So the guy they actually went to replace Mayfield isn't even going to be playing. That's got to be a kick in the chiclets. Now, we won't get on our soapbox here, but honestly, we are disappointed in the way the Browns have yet again handled a situation. And if we were Mayfield, we would honestly probably not care about any other game this season but this one. This game's going to go one of two ways. Baker's either going to throw five touchdowns or five interceptions. And honestly, with the fact that Brisket is playing at QB, or Brissett, not Brisket, Brissett, we actually think, by the way, Josh Dobbs should be named the starter on this team. But the way Jacoby Brissett has been uh, and his struggles this preseason, we think the Panthers are the better team in this matchup. So with our first bet of week number one in the NFL, we're going to take the Carolina Panthers at minus one and a half points. Now, I know we're Browns fans. How do we bet against our own team? And, hey, I guess the upside is if that bet loses, hey, we'll be happy for the first time in week one on an NFL Sunday since 2004. Now, enough about the dumpster fire Browns. Let's look at our second best bet this week. And do that. Uh, to do that, we need to look at Jacksonville Jaguars and the Washington Commanders. The Commanders playing at home for week one. They come into this week one matchup as a two and a half point favorite at the moment. The over under is set at 43 and a half. And speaking of dumpster fires, the Jacksonville Jaguars have been one for quite some time in the NFL now, but they had a big off season and you think that they are going to be much improved here in 2022. Led by Trevor Lawrence, who at times last season showed that he could be an NFL QB. Still needs to clean up his act, especially with his accuracy. Last season, Lawrence only connected on 59% of his passes and threw five more interceptions than touchdowns. Now, the good news for him is that Travis Etienne is back after missing his rookie season with an injury. But honestly, I don't think we're giving enough credit to James Robinson, who showed signs of flash last year as well. Robinson ended the season averaging 4.7 yards per carry and who knows, maybe this two-headed monster rushing attack will be exactly what Lawrence needs to open up that passing game. And speaking of the Jags passing game in the offseason, they added Christian Kirk from the Cardinals, tight end Evan, Evan Ingram from the Giants, and Zay Jones from the Raiders to give the Jags some more threats down the field to pair nicely with veteran Marvin Jones Jr. Now, improving the Jags offense was a priority, but... Their defense needs some help as well uh, if they want to compete here in 2022. Having the number overall pick yet again, they took Trayvon Walker, who should definitely improve that pass rush, and they also added Darius Williams to help their secondary. Now, do we expect these two will all of a sudden create a top five defense in Jacksonville? No, but we do like those additions to help bring down that 26.9 points per game they gave up last season. The Jags will be tested early in this season against the Washington Commanders, who also had off-season additions with some big names. Most notably, they went out and got Carson Wentz, which, let's be honest, wasn't their first choice. Wentz gets a lot of heat from, well, absolutely everyone in the NFL and fans of the NFL, which we find actually a bit surprising, considering he did win a Super Bowl just a few years back in even last season, his stats weren't that bad with the Colts. He threw for over 3,500 passing yards and had 27 touchdowns. Honestly, there's a lot worse QBs you could have on your team. And also, let's not forget that the Colts didn't really have the most dangerous wide receiver core in the league in 2021. Now, this season, Wentz will have Terry McLaurin. And now, and that guy has now 1,000 receiving yards in back-to-back -back seasons. They also have very high hopes for rookie Dotson, who they drafted six overall. But what Wentz has been accustomed to lately is a great running game, especially having Jonathan Taylor last season in Indianapolis. Now he finds himself with another great back in Gibson, who went over 1,000 yards last season, and J.D. McKissick, who's a great check down target out of the backfield. With Jacksonville having a bottom 10 rushing defense last year, we expect the Commanders to come out and utilize that rushing game quite a bit in the first quarter and see if they can't just roll over the front seven of the Jags. Now, speaking, though, of faulty defenses, the Commanders need to also find themselves a way to improve on that side of the ball this season, or it's going to be an up-and-down season just like the last. 
They were horrible defending the pass, giving up 254 yards per game, which was fourth worst in the NFL. Now, they have had a much better rushing defense, which should stifle Etienne and Robinson, but with the added additions of Kirk Ingram and having Marvin Jones Jr., it could be a long day for that Washington secondary. So, what is our best bet here for the Jags versus Commanders in Week 1? Well, we actually think the Jags have a huge ceiling this year, and we know that's a big if. If Trevor Lawrence can be much improved, they might go places. The Jags brought in talent to put around him, and in the first game of the season, the Jags are going to be facing a bad secondary. So, we should right now think that Lawrence is going to be improved right away. On the other side of the ball, yes, Wentz can manage the offense of the Commanders, but honestly, the Jags' secondary is not half bad, and you have a rookie pass rusher that can also fill the holes of the Commanders' rushing attack. We believe we're going to take the Jacksonville Jaguars in week number one at plus two and a half over the Commanders as our second best bet. I know that's a dog, and actually I like the money line a lot, but we'll play it safe and take Jacksonville at plus two and a half. Now, before we get into that third pick of week number one, just a reminder, if you're looking for our entire card for NFL and college football, head on over to Patreon, join our community. It's as cheap as $6.99 a month, and you get our full card each and every day. The link's in the description, and we look forward to having you be part of our family real soon. But we do have one more, uh, more time for one more free pick for week number one. And for our last matchup, we are going to look at the Philadelphia Eagles and the Detroit Lions. The Eagles, four and a half point favorites in this one. The over-under is set at 48 and a half. Now the Eagles, they're coming off a nine and eight season last year, but really the talk in leading up to the season has been the off-season moves that they have acquired on both sides of the football. This team behind Jalen Hurts leading the way at QB was primarily a rushing offense last season, averaging about 160 yards per game, which was best in the NFL. As good as they were rushing the football last season, they were just as bad passing the ball. They only averaged 210 yards through the air, which was fourth worst in the NFL. However, the addition of A.J. Brown should help this passing game and possibly give Hurts more opportunities to run play action bootlegs and open him up as a premier dual threat QB. Now, the Eagles last year, they weren't horrible on the defensive side of the football, but there is definitely some room for improvement. The Eagles last season gave up 22.6 points per game, which was 18th most in the NFL, but with solid men up front to stop the rushing attack of the Lions, we expect them to come out in week one and force Goff to throw the ball to beat them. And speaking of the Lions, I am not sure why, but everyone is so high on this team. Is it because these guys were on hard knocks and everybody just watched them on TV? Honestly, we don't love this team this year, but hey, that's why you play the games, right? They were 3-13-1 last season and only scored 19 points per game. Behind Goff, they were also really bad at passing the football, only putting up 228 yards per game through the air. Now, everyone is high on the offensive line being something special this season. We are not. Again, go ahead and fight about us here in the comments, especially in this game where the Eagles have a solid defensive line that was top 10 in the league last year. And we don't expect DeAndre Swift to have a great game at all in this one. Goff does have DJ Sharp now and Amon Ross St. Brown to complement his great tight end Hawkinson, but is that enough to get past the Eagles in week one? We're not so sure. Just like the Eagles defense, this Lions team also has a lot of work to do they started that work in the draft by drafting Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan, who should help a defensive line that only had 36 sacks last season. Now, this defense as a whole coming off almost giving up 28 points per game, which was second most in the NFL last season. What is our best bet, you ask then, in the Eagles and the Lions game? Well, both of these teams, in our mind, do struggle on the defensive side of the ball a little bit, and we think that Jalen Hurts with his new weapon, A.J. Brown, they're going to show that their passing game can be for real this year. That being said, the Eagles' defense, until they can stop the passing game as well, well, they have us a little worried that they're going to give up two or three touchdowns to the Lions to this one, and the Lions are going to probably keep this a close game. So instead of looking at the spread with our third pick of week number one in the NFL, we're going to take the Eagles and the Lions over 48 and a half points. Now that does us it for uh, us here at Grandstand Betters for week number one. 
Uh, remember, hit the subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of our picks, predictions, and contests throughout the year. And remember, sign up by 1 p.m. and get those picks in on our $1,000 betting contest over at GrandstandBetters.com. As always, though, sit back, relax, enjoy, finally, finally, some NFL football on this beautiful Sunday. And we'll see you next week with our Week 2 predictions.